Welcome to John Gets Games. Today we'll be doing a full playthrough of Food Fighters. In this game, one player takes on the role of the vegetable army and the other player takes on the role of the meat army. And you're just trying to duke it out and get to the end of the game by killing a certain number of your opponent's units. And in order to get there, you're going to be rolling dice in order to gather beans, which are a currency, in order to get spoons that you can throw as spears, crackers that you can use as shields, as well as a little bit of asymmetric player powers on each side. So I'll teach the game as we're playing and let's jump right into it. Here is the starting setup for Food Fighters. We have the vegetables versus the meat over here, and we're going to play the vegetable faction in this specific video. And turns are really simple in this game. As you can see here, the first thing you do is take one action from three different options, which are roll for beans, which is a currency in the game. You can swap uh, two of your people around in your little army formation as you're trying to fight against the other side, and then you can attack as well. And I'll explain all these in a little more detail. But once you do one of those, you can then buy something, which might be one of these abilities that are here with a bean value cost down at the bottom, or it'll be some of these items. These are crackers, which are shields and let you take more damage. We have spoons, which act as spears that you can throw across the other side, and then these skillets can kind of modify the desires of the specific soldiers in your army. And the last thing that happens is you fill any gaps in your army line, uh, moving closer to the front of the battle. This card here shows us how much various things cost with beans. We can see that the spoon or the skillet both cost three beans, and then the cracker and this extra die cost four beans, and this is a one-time use die that's much better than the basic dice that you're gonna be using as you play the game. So now let's start the game, and we're gonna begin as the vegetable side, and we can see that we have no beans, which are a currency, and so the first thing we can do is just roll these dice until we see none of these little green splotchy symbols, and then we take that number of beans. So we could get five beans, or we could get unlucky and only get two beans. An alternative thing we could do is we could do an attack, and in order to do a successful attack, you have to have the correct opponent in range. You'll see that every single one of these units is thinking about a specific type of opponent that they are really angry about. So this piece of broccoli really hates this uh, this steak over here, but we see that this uh, bunch of lettuce really hates drumsticks. So what that means is this uh, lettuce can only attack a drumstick uh, enemy, and it can only attack one that is adjacent to this unit. And adjacency is just the one that's directly in front or at a single diagonal on either side. So that means that this character can actually attack this character here. This one over here can also attack this drumstick because they really don't like drumsticks, and it's at a diagonal. However, this broccoli over here is unlucky. All of these are out of range because the diagonal is off. And uh, lastly, we can see that these six units down here can't attack anything at the moment. That's one of the reasons these spoon exists, but I'll get to that in a minute. And this game is called Food Fighters after all, so I think our first action should be attacking instead of rolling for beans. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to claim the attackers. Well, let's say this broccoli here is going to attack this drumstick, and then we're gonna roll these two dice into our tray and see if we got any of those green splat symbols. Now, we didn't, which means we've missed. All we needed was one of those splat symbols that you could see right there in order to make a hit, and that would have just removed the unit. However, that didn't happen. But as a nice consolation prize, we get to take all the beans that are showing. So we still get five beans, so it's a good turn. We had a chance to knock out one of our opponent's units, but we get five beans. And now we move into the next part of the turn where we could spend these beans to get stuff. For instance, we could spend four of them to be able to roll this dice with us on the next turn. However, four is quite a few beans and we don't really have a great reason to at the moment. So I think let's save these because as you can see, these abilities down here take quite a few beans. We might want to work towards those. Now, what we're working towards in this whole game, obviously, is to try and defeat our opponent. And the way you defeat the opponent is by having three of one type of um, your opponent's units. So we see that there is bacon, uh, drumsticks, and steaks over here. So all the vegetable player needs to do, all we need to do, is destroy three of one type. You don't need to kill all of the different types of your opponents. And then, of course, likewise, they're trying to get three of ours. So now let's move on to the meat player's turn. They decide they want to attack as well, but unfortunately for them, both of these two people at the front really want to kill onions, and onions are all in the back of the line. However, this steak right here can target lettuce, so they're going to go ahead and do that attack. So they're going to roll the two dice, and they got the splat. So now they won that battle, so they do not get these beans. You only grab those as a consolation reward if you have a failed attack. And that means that this soldier right here has been captured, and this goes over to the opponent's side. And now the uh, meat player would be able to buy something, but they don't have any beans. So the last part of the turn, we need to fill in the gaps uh, in our line. So we need to take 
a unit from the very back of our line and move it to the, this uh, hole right here in the middle. Now, we could do either of these onions, but we know that both these players, um, both these enemies, want to attack onions. However, we also have this lettuce, and this guy can keep attacking lettuce, which is not great for us. But considering the meat player has already grabbed a lettuce player and you win when you get all three of a type, we definitely don't want to put that lettuce out there. So let's grab this bacon-hating onion, move it all the way to the front. Now they have a chance to attack this bacon over here, which is pretty good for us. It's back to us, and I think that we should attack again. I mean, it worked out relatively well for us last turn. We got all those beans over there. And let's go ahead and have this onion that just moved over to the front. Let's go ahead and have them attack this bacon. That's not the worst thing in the world because they kind of hate each other. And if it knocks us out, then currently no one would be able to attack this onion. In fact, we see that all these people in the back that would fill that spot, they don't dislike onions themselves because they're all up the front. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to roll the two dice and hope we get a green splat. And oh man, we don't get it, but we get four more beans. And when you add that to the previous five, we now have nine total. And I think it's time to activate one of our special abilities. If you look at this one right here, first of all, it has a little infinity sign. So once we buy this, we get it for the rest of the game. And it says whenever your attack hits, you just get two beans. Now, we haven't had a successful attack yet, but you need two attack in order to win the game. So this seems like a pretty good thing to invest in. So let's go ahead and spend uh, seven of our beans off to the side to activate this card. Now, normally, I would move it to another spot in our area to show, but... My screen space is a little bit limited, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a bean down on top of this thing to remind us that this is active for the rest of the game. It's the meat player's turn again, and I think this piece of bacon wants revenge for that failed attack that just happened, so they're going to go ahead and attack this onion here that whiffed on the previous turn. They're going to go ahead and roll the dice and see, oh, they did not get the green symbol. In fact, they had a pretty poor roll in general. That's pretty much the worst outcome you could have with an attack. They're only going to get two beans out of it as a consolation. And with these two beans, they can't actually buy anything. The cheapest thing out there is three beans for a spoon or a skillet. So, uh, well, they're just going to have to end their turn there. It's back to us, and now that we have this bean boost, we really want to do a successful attack because we get two beans as a bonus. Also, we really need to start killing these units on our opponent's side. So let's go ahead and do that one more time with this hateful onion wanting to target this bacon over here. We're going to go ahead and roll the dice, and it's good to know that these dice are not actually the same. One of them only has one of these splat symbols on the opposite side is three beans, whereas the other one has splat symbols on two of the sides, which means out of the 12 total sides, there are three hits. So let's see if we get lucky this time, and we got it. All right, so this two bean doesn't matter. This one splat means that we're successful. That means that this bacon is taken off the board, and our bean boost is going to immediately get us two more beans, which is pretty great. I don't have a ton of screen space, so let's go ahead and scoot some of these items over, and we'll put them there for the moment to show that we have captured them. And now we get to purchase something, and I think that we want to buy a spoon. We see that it costs three of these beans, so they go away. Now we get uh, one of the two spoons that we have allocated, and this is essentially a spear. And what we're going to want to do is give it to this guy right here. We'll put it in his hand. And the spoon lets you attack at infinite distance on the straight or on the diagonal. And we see that this piece of broccoli hates bacon, and both of the opponent's other bacons are in the same line. So we have a pretty good shot to hit one of these guys. The unfortunate thing is when you use the spear, you lose it whether or not you make the hit or not. So we might want to try and plan ahead and try to roll a third die when we actually do that attack, but that's going to end our turn. But before the meat player can go, they have to fill this gap up at the front. They're going to go ahead and take this drumstick, move it up there because it really doesn't like broccoli. The meat player obviously wants to target lettuce, but they're both kind of in the back. So for now, they're just going to go ahead and have this new drumstick up at the front attack the broccoli over here. So they're going to go roll both the dice and they got a hit. So once again, they don't get the beans for it, but this unit is taken out and put over into their area and now they get to try and buy something but once again they still only have these two beans so they're not doing a very good job at getting beans but they are getting more of our units than we are of theirs and now we have to reinforce up to the front here. I think it really does make sense to move this onion up because now they have one of each of the other two types and this guy really wants to attack both of these drumsticks. We want to keep on attacking and if we look over here we see that only this middle one has a valid attack path towards us. So let's go ahead and try to take it out. So this broccoli over here really doesn't like drumsticks. It's at a diagonal. So they're going to attack over to there, and we'll see what we get. Well, we are now doing really good with these attacks. So that's going to go ahead and knock this guy out, and our bean boost is going to get us two more beans from the supply. We can go ahead and slide him up there for the moment. And now we could choose to buy something, but I think we want to keep saving up for something bigger like this die here. So it's up to our opponent to reinforce back over to the front. 
and considering we've taken a bacon and a drumstick, it's kind of equally bad for both of them. And unfortunately, both of these really dislike lettuce, and well, our lettuce is really far in the back. So definitely not a great situation for them in general. So they're going to go ahead and, well, they'll just bring this bacon over here to the front. The meat players decided that they are sick of having no beans. They want to get some more beans, and they're going to do a roll for beans turn. The only real difference between this and attacking is that if they get any of these green splat symbols, they get to re-roll that die. So they were hoping to get a whole bunch of beans right here, and oh, that's pretty great. Actually, they get five beans for that. They don't have to re-roll anything, and I think they're pretty happy. So these get added to their area. They now have seven total, but they are going to hold off for the moment and try to maybe grab one of these powers on the next turn, so that's going to end their turn. It's back to us, and I think we should keep on attacking. We like bacon, and we like drumsticks, and we have a couple of those out here. In fact, we can target both of these things, and it seems like neither of these actually have a good attack path back towards us at the moment. But we know that if we take out this drumstick, the meat player is going to be forced to take this one and put it right back in its place, which would make it much easier for us to get to the three of a kind. So let's go ahead and attack this one from the onion right over here. We're going to roll the two dice, and we miss. Uh, but that's okay, because we get four beans out of the process. Not bad at all. And with these four beans, I think it's time to start using this cool die over here. So we're going to spend four of them, the four that we just got, back to the bank to grab this. And that means that on our next turn, we're going to roll that with the other two dice here. And it does two splat symbols on it, so it's more likely that we're going to get one. Also, just in general, there's a lot more beans on this die. So pretty happy to have that. It's now the meat player's turn, and they're in a bit of a jam. Nothing on their front line can attack anything on the front line of the vegetable side of us, so that's pretty good for us. So I think what they're going to do is the last type of action that we haven't really covered yet, and that's a swap action. They are going to go ahead and bring, let's see, this steak right here that really dislikes broccoli. They're going to go ahead and swap this one with this bacon right here, pulling the bacon back, and now on the following turns, they will potentially have a shot to attack over here, and you always get one bean from the bank as a bonus whenever you do a swap action, which brings them to eight. And they decide to spend four of their beans getting one of these crackers into play. Now, these are one-time use uh, shields. Once they are used, they get removed from the game because they break because they're crackers, <laughs> and they're going to go ahead and put it in the hands of this drumstick here. They could see that the attack failed on the last turn, but they want to make sure that it's even less likely to work on this turn because they are a bit vulnerable having this next drumstick being forced into the front line and potentially having them lose the game. So they're going to put this here, and this will block one of the splat symbols. If we still roll two green splat symbols on our attack, then we will still take this guy out, but that's much less likely. So it's back to us, and we get this extra die for our turn, and I think we will continue attacking because that's the name of the game here, and we keep getting bonuses for it. So now we do get to decide. We are in a position where if we were to use this spoon, we're in a good spot to get a splat symbol and take out this piece of bacon here, or we're in a pretty good spot to um, take out this cracker twice. So it's a bit of an interesting decision. I suppose let's go ahead and do the spoon because we've already invested in it. So now is a good time to kind of do the payoff and it leaves our options open. So the broccoli is going to try to attack the um, bacon over here. We're gonna roll all three dice and oh no. Oh my goodness. Well, it did not pay off for us. We did not get any splats, but we do get six beans as a consolation prize. Unfortunately, this little spoon here whiffed and missed the bacon, so this goes back to our supply. Bit of a waste for us, but we do get six more beans, which is quite a lot. And with all those, it'd be great to buy another spear and try it again on a following turn. However, you're never allowed to use an item, uh, to buy an item that you just used, which means not only can we not buy another spear, we cannot buy this red dye back either. But that's okay, because right now we're at nine beans, and we do have this one time per use card that requires 10 beans, which we could potentially do on another turn, which lets us bring one of these uh, um, taken units back into our area, which prolongs the game and makes it harder for us to lose. So I think that's fine. We'll go ahead and save all of our beans. The stake has decided it wants to attack this broccoli again. We'll see how their luck is this time, and they got it. They got the one splat they needed, so this broccoli is taken out, and now they actually have two broccolis, which puts us in a slightly precarious situation because, of course, you win immediately if you ever have three of one type of unit. But now we have to reinforce to the spot here, and we don't even have a choice. This lettuce has to be the one that goes up here. So unfortunately for the red player, I suppose, the last broccoli is still a little bit hidden, but that's good news for us. And the meat army decides to spend three of these beans to take the spear and put it in the arms of this piece of bacon right here because it's funny, they kind of hate each other across the lines. On the next turn, if this broccoli is here, the meat player could just win, even though we have all this stuff. 
they could send the spear over and hit it. Now, of course, we might have regrown something at that point, but that's going to be their turn, and now it moves back to us. Our best path to victory is still, I think, trying to get through to this drumstick over here. So I think we're going to keep doing that, but we've got this crop rotation in our back pocket. We're not going to let the meat player have a shot at winning the game on the next turn. We're going to spend five of these to swap things around, but you'll see that in a second. So to begin with, let's see if we can destroy this cracker here by attacking from this onion over to the drumstick. Maybe we'll get lucky and to get two splats. That would be awesome. Oh man, really close, but not quite. So this two bean doesn't do anything. This destroys the cracker uh, from the game but we are a little bit closer to being able to get that little combo going. And now I think what we want to do is spend five of our beans and do this crop rotation. We say, see it says, perform a swap of two of your fighters or two of the enemy fighters. And we definitely want to negate the spoon bonus of this uh, bacon over here, so I think we'll swap our opponent's things. We're going to take this piece of bacon here and we're actually going to swap it over here. So now not only does the spoon not have a great uh, attack, like the broccoli is kind of uh, protected from it, but we can now destroy this and then the spoon goes away and that completely gets rid of that threat entirely. And if you look at the bottom of this card, you can see you return this to the pantry after used, and this is the pantry here. So that means we could have saved this for later, but we just used it immediately, it's back here, and on a future turn, we could do that again. The meat player, once again, has no valid attacks. You see, their front line all hates broccoli and broccoli is just safe back here in the back of our formation. So they're gonna go ahead and do a swap and they're gonna just undo the thing that we just did to them. It's a bit of a stall out on their turn and they're gonna get a bonus bean for doing that. I think this still worked out better for us because we got to do things and swap instead of spending our whole turn swapping these around. So it's now the end of their turn. They only have two beans, which they can't really do anything with. So it's back to us. We're back to the epic fight of this onion trying to take out this drumstick and I think we gotta keep trying to do that. We get beans when we miss, but we get stuff when we win, and we still have this good combo. Gosh, we really wanna make this happen. So let's go ahead and roll the dice and see. Yes, we finally got it, all right. So with a bunch of work, we are finally able to take this guy out. In fact, let's go ahead and store these guys down here so we can see them a little better. And that's really good for us because we now have two out of the three we need to win, and the red player has no choice but to reinforce back here. But before they do that, it's actually our turn, and you know what? I think that considering this can attack that guy, we're going to spend all four of these. We're going to take the red die for our next turn, and then the meat player is forced to do a reinforcement up to there. The meat player is simultaneously in a really bad situation, but also a good one for a Hail Mary pass. Now, we decided to attack last turn instead of defending this broccoli, and because of that, the meat player has this one spoon, and they could send that over and potentially kill this broccoli, and if they did, we would actually immediately lose the game, even though we've done way more stuff and getting way more beans than our opponent, but this is their moment. They pretty much have to go because they can see next turn we are going to be rolling three dice, and we have a really good chance of taking out this drumstick here, so they are going to play the odds, take a risk, and do a Hail Mary and try to kill the broccoli, and they got it. Oh my gosh. All right, so with that, this little spoon spear sticks right into the broccoli. The broccoli is done. It goes into their area, and with that, we actually lost. Man, um, it just goes to show that even if you're getting a whole bunch more stuff than your opponent, including a infinite boost thing right here every single time you are winning an attack, they can still win if they are in the right spots and they take the right risks. So that ends this game of Food Fighters. We lost, unfortunately, and the meat won by taking out all of our broccoli. I hope you enjoyed this playthrough, and if you'd like to see more full game playthroughs like this one, as well as in-depth board game reviews and vlogs, please subscribe to my channel. Also, you can directly support the channel at patreon.com slash johngetsgames. Thanks for watching.